my season of harvest is here. We started the month with Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Uh, there is a right time for everything. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to do what? A time to harvest. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Genesis 8 verse 22. Why the earth remain? What that means as long as we live. As long as you live, see time and harvest. So there will always be a time to sow and a time to reap. And that's why we come to a conclusion by the prophetic instruction of God for this month. Joseph's season of harvest is here. My season of harvest is here. And we started the month by looking at what to sow. We look at diligence as a seed. See a man diligent in his business. The moment he's so diligent, he will stand before great men and not before ordinary men. You want to enter into harvest of greatness. You must sow diligence. He that tilled the land shall be satisfied with bread. We look at joy as a seed. With joy shall you draw water. From the wells of salvation. Joel 1 verse 12. We saw how the trees of the field were withered away. Because joy was withered uh, from the sons of men. Joy as a seed. And we also look at the thunk, the word as a seed. We speak the word. The power of death and life is in your tongue. The seed is the word of God. And uh, uh, in the last service... We began to look at the seed. If you need financial breakthrough and miracle, you must also sow financial seed. We'll continue from there in this service. Input will perpetually answer to output. Or output will answer to input. What you put in is what you get out of life. What you sow will determine what you will reap. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, the same he will reap. Your seed will determine your harvest. The quality of your seed will determine your harvest. Genesis 26 verse 12. Isaac sowed. Verse 3. Isaac was promised to remain in Gerah. Genesis 12 verse 3, uh, 26 verse 3. And God said, if you remain here, everything I promise your father Abraham, I will also give to you. But that promise was not activated until verse 12, when Isaac sowed in the land. Your seed will activate the promise of God for your life. There are things God has promised you that will never happen until you sow. Particularly if you need a financial miracle. This month, I challenge you to look for quality seed. If what you want is harvest, particularly financial harvest, economic harvest, harvest of um, uh, next level, maybe you, you have stayed on a particular position for a long time. On Thursday, I told you my personal story. Every major break I have experienced in life, a seed always go ahead. I sow for things. I sow for my children. Sow for my wife. Sow for business. Sow for opportunities. Sow for ministry. Sow for anything. Sow for meetings. Every opportunity to sow. I don't go on vacation. Every farmer that go on vacation during sowing time will also go on vacation during harvest time. Praise the Lord. The moment they say, it's time to give, and you look down. When it's time to harvest, you have to also look down. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, the same he will reap. I've even seen in the days that we use, we just give offering into offering bag. These days, we put our offering in honor of Jesus neatly into an envelope. But I've seen people 
who put empty hand, and when they bring the offering bag, they put it inside. If you sow wild wind, you know what you will reap. You sow empty hand, it will come pressed down, shaking together, running over, empty. Praise the Lord. Whatsoever a man sow, the same he will reap. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Powerful scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. He said, But this I say, those who sow sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And those who sow bountifully shall also reap bountifully. The quality of your seed will determine the quality of your harvest. Verse 7 now. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. We're going to talk to verse 8. Give me 7. Every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. As you propose, give. God love a cheerful giver. God is able to make how many grace? All oh, grace abound towards you, that you, you know, having all sufficiency in all things, that you may abound in every good work. He that sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. The quality of your seed will determine the quality of your habit. I challenge you to give big. I challenge you to be creative in your giving. Lord, what do you want me to give at this point in time? If it is not enough, it's a seed. And every wise farmer take quality seed during planting time. Verse 6, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, Amplified Translation. Remember this. He who so sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. Praise God. Don't say, no, 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 this thing about giving. Pastor, I enjoy your message about diligence. Leave giving, leave giving, leave giving. Oh. Go back to the scripture. He who sows sparingly and gradually will also reap sparingly and gradually. And he who sow generously, the blessing may come to someone, will also reap generously with blessing. I challenge you on Thursday. Look for somebody you are you're going to be a blessing to. Sow into their life. Bless them. Verse 7, amplified. We're going to take it up to verse 8. He said, let each one give as he has made up his own mind and as he has proposed in his eyes. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure. One of the reasons I want to read this amplified is because of what I'm, this particular part I'm reading now. God loves, meaning he takes pleasure, he prize above all the things and is unwilling, I like this one, unwilling to abandon. God will not abandon you. God is unwilling to abandon. And to do without a cheerful, meaning joyous, prompt to do it giver. God cannot do without a prompt to do it giver. Once this man here, it's time to give, he jump into it. Prompt to do it. Cheerful. Joyous, whose heart is in his giving. And verse uh, 8, I like this verse 8 so much. Anytime I want to escape from my wife, I use verse 8 for her. This man, this may be a good prescription for you. Okay? God is able to make how many grace? All grace, which means at Every favor and earthly blessing come to us to you in abundance. So that you may always and order how many circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient. This is what I tell my wife. You are self-sufficient. God has endowed you. Possessing enough and she require no aid or support. You don't need no aid. You don't need any aid or support. 
When a when God favor a woman, is she not favor? <laughs> Earthly favors and blessings. <laughs> she requires no aid or support. And she is furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable. You see that as I'm preaching, I'm not looking at this side. <laughs> God is able to make all grace abound towards you. This is the life of a giver. When you're prone to do a giver, you will need no head, no support. You will be too loaded. All earthly blessing and favors, it will just be directing traffic of them to you. Requiring no aid, no support. This is the life of a giver. I challenge you today to be a giver. When you're a prompt, cheerful, willing giver. Look at the scripture we read. It said, God cannot do without a prompt to do it giver. He's unwilling to abandon and to do without. God can't do without a prompt to do it giver. He can abandon them. They can't be doing a project and God will look away. Mm, it's not possible. They are planning wedding. God, God will ensure that all favor, earthly blessing, abound towards them until they don't need aid or support. Praise God. God wants you to prosper. Psalm 35, 27. God take pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Give big. Be a prompt to do it, giver. When there is time to give towards the work of God, A, be the first. Be in the forefront. Be prompt. When God lays a seed in your heart, don't doubt. One thing I know, devil will not ask any man to give. Every time you have a prompting of the spirit to give something to someone, to a church, to a cause, know it's from God. Satan never prompt anyone to give because he knows your prosperity is in your giving. God take pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Solomon tried this in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 3 to 5. And um, he gave a thousand burnt offering. Nobody, every time you go to the outer court, you go there with your own Ram, and when you get there, the priest says, Hey, what is your problem? And say, I, I just committed sin. Say, okay, lay your hand upon your ram, confess all your sin. They slaughter it and say, Okay, you can go, your sins are forgiven, and all of that. And they perform that sin offering to God, perform that sacrifice. But one day, one man was coming and he was bringing 1,000. All manner of cry. They've never seen it before. Even the, in heaven, there was an attention. Hey, who is this guy? And you need to read the rest of the story. Solomon gave God a thousand burnt offering. And verse 4, what happened? And the king went to give me to sacrifice there. And, and that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offering. Verse 5, my emphasis. And in Gibeon, the same place he sacrificed. The Bible says, the Lord appeared to Solomon. You want God to appear to you in this self same month? The story of Isaac we read. The Bible says Isaac saw and in the same year, in the same place, the Lord appeared to Solomon and in a dream by night and God said to Solomon, ask me what I will give you. More or less God gave him his checkbook signed and said write any amount you want. You want open check? Give what you have never given before. Give what no man has given before. Give big. Sacrifice. Prompt to do it. And as God is laying on your heart, you say, okay, God, I give this for your work. I give this to your kingdom. Can I hear amen? I'm going to leave that section. Then let's move to how to prepare for the Holy Ghost Conference. I'll come back to that in the second service. How to prepare for the Holy Ghost Conference. If you like, you can call it the power of expectation. I'm expectant. This meeting, there is a lot of noise about it. God is set to change our story. He's set to move us forward. 
Amos chapter 4, verse 12. God is charging this church. He said, O Israel, O Highland Church, this is what I will do to you. Prepare to meet your God. From Wednesday, the power of God will be moving through this place in another dimension. They are meeting and they are meeting. They are meeting God organized to change people's story. And you need to know the grace that rests upon the Holy Ghost meeting. Last year we call it recharge. It's a fire grace. It's a power grace. This meeting will change your prayer life. Spiritually we move you forward. And God is saying, hey, prepare to meet your God. Somebody position yourself to meet your God in this five days conference. This is one meeting you should not plan to miss at all. Take permission from the office. Take vacation for this period. Arrive early. Condition your spirit that this one meeting, my story will change. And you need to know that God always chooses events, meetings, with which he changed people's life, with which he moved them forward. God always chooses events. The fact that we changed the name of this meeting from Richard to Holy Ghost Conference is, is because the Holy Ghost wants to do something in somebody's life. If you are that person, can I hear a loud amen from you? God chooses event and meeting with which he moves people forward. Holy Ghost Conference is one of such events. In this ministry, we have done all manner of events. And we have seen testimony follow. The one we had this morning is as a result of last year, Richard Conference. Recently, upgrade. Somebody said, my destiny is upgraded. Operation Esther. It's another one. Operation, all manner of operation we have done in this church. Days of Grace. Covenant Day of Exemption. Covenant day of fruitfulness. And now God is bringing Holy Ghost Conference. God chooses events, meeting, to move people forward. And he chooses place also. The kind of oil that God has poured upon this ground and upon the meeting called the Holy Ghost Conference, you don't find it everywhere. The grace that is at work in Goshen for this period, you don't find it all the time. That's why you need to run to maximize this period. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 21. First Samuel chapter 3 21. The Bible says, and God appear again in Shiloh. This is our own Shiloh. God appear, he has appeared there before. In Goshen, we have seen God before. He's, appear, he's about to appear again. God appear again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to, Sam, to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of God. He wants to reveal himself to somebody here from Wednesday as we share the word. More importantly, in the Holy Ghost conference, we're going to do more of praying than sharing the word. We only share the word for understanding, but the atmosphere is for prayer. The atmosphere is for empowerment. The atmosphere is for praying in the Holy Ghost. Can I hear amen from somebody? Amen. And God is said to appear to us again. This conference is special, organized by the Lord himself to turn somebody's life around. This is one meeting you should not plan to miss. It is more than a conference. It is an appointment with destiny. If you remember our teaching during Operation Esther, when the king sent for you, you don't turn down the invitation. Vasti was removed because she turned down the invitation of the king. When they call you to a place of honor, you run for your life. Where is the God is calling you? He says, prepare to meet your God. 5.30, I am here. The Lord said, I'm waiting for you. Where will you be? Praise the Lord. You can't afford to be in traffic. Prepare. To meet your God. Plan against traffic. Amen. Plan. And say, I avoid this traffic. Anything that will not allow me to maximize this on-ground experience. For those of you in Lagos, 
and those of us who are watching online, the life experience, pray against it. Avoid it. I saw a joke in the course of this week. Somebody said he did a bet. He's a, I think he's a comedian. He did a bet with uh, another person that um, the other person was going to London and, he, and it's a six hours flight. And he said that he will get to London before the guy gets to Lekki. Did you see that joke? And the guy, the guy got to the, the Lekki traffic that tired apart. Wicked, wicked traffic. So he abandoned his car. He started running. He said, God will not disappoint me. <laughs> this man will not get to London before me. How dare you from mainland to Lekki you are sending six hours? The rich also cry. Pray against traffic. Avoid it. When you check it and you see it, you just say, no, I'm not going. No, I will not embark on this journey. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God wants to move our life forward, so you must prepare to meet your God. That's what God asked me to share with you. Preparation is required for you to maximize destiny. Any destiny that will be great must be prepared for. Any destiny that will be awesome must be glorious, must be prepared for. Preparation is required to maximize this meeting. For you to maximize what God has in stock, you must prepare. Second Chronicle 27, 6. Jotan, Second Chronicle 27, verse 6. Jotan became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord. Your preparation determines your destiny. You want to be great? Position yourself. Preparation will determine performance. The reason you have pure, poor result is because you have poor preparation. Poor preparation. The lecturer is not your problem. It's your preparation. I like you to admit for once. Poor preparation will give back to poor performance. You can't be looking for tie on wedding day. <laughs> Say, ah, where, where's my tie? Where's my tie? No. And I'm not joking. I know somebody on wedding day, they are just buying the white shirt he will wear. So they went to Oshodi and they didn't open on time in Oshodi to buy white shirt for himself and the best man. The devil is a bastard. Poor preparation. Can I, can I shock you? That marriage is more reborn today. Because we saw it on the wedding day. There was no shirt. Any man who cannot, cannot prepare like that will not take care of a woman. He, he can he can he can prepare well. Then you entrust your daughter into the hand of that a man. That's why the devil is a liar. He's a bastard. They say love is blind. But if you can't buy shirt, open your eyes. Looking for a tie on wedding day. Where's my brooch? Everything should be ready. Can I hear a fire here, man? Anything you don't plan for won't go well. This meeting is starting on Wednesday. Plan very well. Amen? How Saturday will look like? Plan it. Make sure you position yourself. In fact, imagine where you are going to sit. <laughs> and you have to come early to sit there. Otherwise, your seat be given to another. And your seat will not be given to another. Amen. Position yourself. Don't sit behind a camera that will not allow you to see what you should be seeing. If there are people who are noisemakers in the church, plan to sit away from them. Far. Because it is when service is going on, they'll be doing gum and they'll be asking you questions. When your whole lemma, your word, the word you will never hear until five years after. Then while you are discussing with them, their own job, they are not going anywhere and they are here to distract people who are going somewhere. On assignment. 
So you have seen them, one service, two service, while service is going on, that's the time they want to gist with you. Plan to sit far away from them. Diagonal. You will be here, they will be there. It's difficult. For There's no meeting point. Can I hear a fire here? Yeah. We're talking about preparation. Position yourself for this meeting. So I'll give you five points. Maybe we'll take two in this service, then we'll take the other three in the service. How to prepare for this meeting. Number one, clean up. Somebody say clean up. What does that mean? Impartation requires consecration. Impartation requires separation. Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4. In the upper room, when they stayed there, the Bible says they were in one one accord, in one place. They stayed in that upper room for 50 days. They don't know what the promise looked like. But they are there. Lord, you promise us. Lord, you promise us. Lord, you promise us. Lord we are waiting. In one accord and in one place. The Lord did not tell them that on 49 day, on 50 day, on 51 day, on, on the third day, on the seventh day. He just said, tarry in Jerusalem until we endured with power. Impartation requires consecration. Impartation requires separation. Clean up. There are friends you move with today that are going nowhere. Separate yourself from them. You are going for a meeting, an encounter with Jehovah. Prepare. Remember where we started from Amos 4.12. Prepare to meet your God. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. We cannot continue to live in sin and ask that grace will abound. Grace and sin, grace and iniquity cannot cohabit. Oh, I say, uh, but <laughs> anything I do, grace cover. God understand. No. Grace and sin can't stay together. You want impartation in this meeting? Please, stay under grace. To stay under grace is to stay away from iniquity. Let everyone that name after the name of the law depart from iniquity. Separate yourself. Anyone that always allow you go down spiritually, separate yourself from them. Separate yourself from him. Anywhere you go and you lose spirituality, don't go there again. We have few days. Clean up. That's what Exodus 19 from verse 10 says. He says, I want you, Exodus 19 from verse 10. The Lord said to Moses, he said, tell these people, sanctify yourself. Another word for clean up is sanctify yourself. He said, tomorrow, let them wash their clothes. Clean up. And what happened in verse 11? He said, be ready because on the third day, I will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Why is God asking them to wash their clothes, prepare for me? Then on the third day, I will appear. He said, I don't want any dirty person. Sanctify yourself. Clean up. On the third day, then I will appear. When you are ready and you are prepared, then I will appear upon the mountain. You want impartation in this meeting? You want your fire level to move to a greater height? Please, there are things you need to forsake. Anything that pull you down, from now, resolve. No more! I won't put my hand into it. I won't go to dirty sight again. I won't do anything that will pollute my spirit. Can I hear a fire? Amen. amen. And I see as you resolve in this service, your life just you, you bring your life to the harvest level, the auto level. No more sin, no more iniquity. Even after the conference, you can't return to Egypt again. Somebody after this Holy Ghost conference, beer will be bitter in your mouth. You know, you, I, I have lost days for it. So I said, first story, naturally, beer is bitter. How do you know? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Becomes like bitter leaf. You taste it like this. Oh, mm. Iniquity always disgrace people. Sin make people stink. 
your sin will find you out. So, wash your clothes. Prepare for me. And on the third day, I will appear on the mountain. I want you to prepare to meet your God. That's what God is telling us. This mountain, I'm coming powerful. I'm coming great. If we want great move of God, let the people be ready. The power is not, is not that God is not willing to release power in a greater dimension. It's just that the people are not ready. Praise the Lord. There are people who will smoke before coming to church. And they start taking tom tom when they come to church. God sees beyond your cosmetic. You, they are smelling of wheat. They will not use perfume. <laughs> you deceive man. Can you deceive God? He knows you inside out. You can't window dress for him. So if there are things you are not doing right now, because... The God of Island Church is not a cosmetic God. Though. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sow, the same he will reap. You want an encounter, genuine one, you have to forsake. It. Then you will see God at coming to you heavy. Your life, will, there will just be a turnaround. I have no doubt this Holy Ghost Conference will turn your life around. Yeah. And God is telling you, forsake. Forsake. If my people who are called my, my name shall humble themselves. You know that this is also a fasting meeting. Our fasting starts as a church from tomorrow. And this church say loud, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so tomorrow, we're going to give you a prayer point you, that you pray. And you don't break your fast. Uh, at least for this week until after each meeting. Share glory. glory. Uh-huh. <laughs> we close when we close uh, until after each meeting they were all in one accord and in one place amen so clean up and get ready for God number two then we close in this first service number two how to prepare for this meeting pray for an encounter Samuel chapter 1 verse 13. Anna prayed for an encounter when she went to Shiloh. Anna prayed. She spake in her heart. Her lips moved. Her voice was not heard. And Eli, Eli thought this lady was drunk early in the morning. But she was not. She was just interceding. Pray for an encounter. In this meeting, I pray for an encounter. Every word shall be my own word. I pray that my word will come. The Lord will appear to me again. I want you to pray heartfelt prayer. James 5.16 Tell us the kind of prayer that moves God. Heartfelt prayer. James chapter 5.16 King James Version says the effectual, not the lazy prayer. Effectual. Look at Amplified Translation. That part. The earnest, heartfelt. Are you praying? Are you feeling it? continued prayer of a righteous man, it makes tremendous power available and dynamic in its working. Heartfelt continual. Lord, I pray for an encounter on this mountain. Lord, by reason of this meeting, change my story. Move my destiny forward. Can I hear amen? amen. Pray for the minister. Lord, as Pastor, come to minister. As Pastor Shegun Kisley come to minister. As Peter Sino Kompi come to lead us in worship. Lord, give me an encounter in this meeting. They are a meeting and they are a meeting. We just finished uh, anniversary. That was a worship meeting. We went into, um, there's another major meeting we did after the anniversary. Huh? After the anniversary, no other major meeting. I think this is the next meeting after the anniversary. Okay, before the anniversary, we did upgrade. Then we move into anniversary. So the focus is different. This one is fire. This one is a counter. So your prayer, you should, you should be in the spirit of the Holy Ghost Conference. 
in the spirit of recharge. The reason we call it recharge is that in case your battery is down, it's time to come and plug and recharge. Can I hear amen? amen. Uh, so as I close this service, I want you to give me a heartfelt, continued prayer. For one minute, pray now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Make it loud. Heartfelt. Heartfelt. Powerful. Advent continued prayer of the righteous man. Make it deeper, make it louder, make it stronger. Zila Dole, don't shut the level of the gate. Alako Taska, Rapa Takada. At the Holy Ghost conference, I pray for the counter. Let my fire level increase. Ella Kotala Tabana, open me up, open me up. And do your surgical work in me till I see like you see I